Hi, Theo here from electrofx.com on behalf of ovo.cz. In this video we will take a look at how to install and use the professional Omnia bar charting software by Ovo. If you'd like to follow along and at the same time get a free trial of this software then just hit pause right now and head over to ovo.cz where you can download yourself a copy. And while you're there you should also grab the free Omnia Remote, Omnia Auto Volume and Omnia Auto Range indicators because I'm also going to demonstrate those. Both the trial and full versions of this Omnia bar charting package are the same file. So once your trial period expires, you simply enter a license key and you can keep on using it. The free trial period is 15 days and then every 90 days you will get another 15 day trial. Just in case you're revisiting these price and volume based charts after some time away. If you've already purchased the license key then get that email handy because I will quickly show you activation and it's also worth mentioning at this stage that a license for this software is included with a VIP membership at electroeffects.com. Now with the software downloaded and your MetaTrader platform open we can go ahead and install the software. If you go to file open data folder on your MetaTrader you're going to be taken to the location that this MetaTrader is looking to for its files. The location will be different for everybody, it certainly won't look like that. As long as you go to File Open Data Folder, you're in the right place. Go into your MQL4 folder and then into your Indicators folder. And this is where you need to paste in that software that you just downloaded. I've already done that as you can see, but if you go ahead and paste that in there, and once complete, just shut down that window. Now you can go over to your Navigator section of MetaTrader. And inside this indicators tree, you're going to need to right click and hit refresh. And then you'll be able to see those four pieces of software that you just pasted in. Before we move on, I'm going to quickly go to tools options. And in the expert advisors tab, you need to make sure that allow DLL imports is checked. That'll save you doing it on a case by case basis. And then go into the charts tab. The maximum bars in chart on a default MetaTrader install are quite low, so you're going to want to increase that. I just use 380,000 bars because 380,000 one minute bars would be just over a year, uh, five minute bars it would be just over five years, so on and so forth. So it's plenty for me, but you can increase that number as you see fit. Then you can click OK. When you hover your mouse over the indicator, it will tell you which version you're running, so that's just one way to do that. We can now open up a new chart. I'm going to use the euro dollar. By default, this opens up on the hour time frame, uh, but the Omnia bar software will run on any standard time frame. It doesn't matter. You'll find that most price based, volume based, uh, offline chart softwares require that you run the M1, but that's not the case with this software. You can use any standard time frame at all. I'm going to use the M1 out of habit and you can now either double click or drag the Omnia bar software onto the chart. The first input you'll see is which time frame you're going to output this to. Uh, if you don't select anything the indicator will choose a unique one for you. You can't use the standard MetaTrader time frames obviously but you can use anything else. If I were to create something for example and I wanted it to be on the M8 I could just put the number 8 in there. If I wanted it to be the H or the D8, I would have to specify the H or the D. Uh, if you don't specify an H or a D, then it defaults to the M. So that would give us an M8 uh, chart right there. The starting number of offline chart candles is set to 1000. Now this is going to be enough to fill any HD monitor these days, but if you want more history on your chart to start with, then you're going to have to increase that number. The next input is the type of chart you'd like to run. So this is a drop down menu. You can set up range bars. You can have the range bars without gaps, without the one tick gap between open and close. You can have Renko charts, Renko charts without the wicks. You can have the mean Renko chart, the point original chart or tick charts, constant volume charts. Now the next setting applies to all types of chart. If you're thinking about the price based charts, then it's the brick size that we're talking about here, and that will be in points, not pips. So the 100 value here is going to be 100 points, which is 10 pips. That's 10.0 pips, 100 points. If you're talking about a volume based chart, then it's 100 ticks that you'd like to have contained within each bar or candle. 
So for the purpose of this video, the only three real differences to look at would be between the tick charts, the mean Renko charts, and then the rest of the price base chart. So I'm going to start up a tick chart to start with. Uh, it's going to be a 100 tick chart and just leave that to the default. And I'm going to set it on the 100 time frame. So that's going to give me an M100 chart and it's going to be a 100 tick chart. I'm going to leave the session control to keep chart continuous. So I'll explain those options a little bit later. And if you have an activation key, this is where you're going to want to paste it in. If you don't have an activation key, then you just leave that blank and it's going to start your 15 day trial. But if you do have an activation key, you will have received an email something like this. The key will be in the middle. Clearly it won't be XXXXX, but it'll be a real key. You're going to want to copy that and paste it into that area right there. Now you're only going to have to do this one time per machine and it will assign this license key to your machine. If you need to move your license key from one machine to another, then you can visit ovo.cz to take care of that. And this final variable down here is something the author has instructed me is not that important and not worth talking about. So you can just leave that default. And by clicking OK, the indicator is going to now create that M100 tick chart. And we can see here that that's what's going on. There's a red X if you wanted to remove that from the chart. Nice, quick and easy way to do it. The M100, just reminding you that that is the M100. And this is also a button that you can click to launch the M100, which we'll do in a sec. Here you can adjust the value on the fly. If I could change it to a 200 tick chart, for example. The M100 is going to be a constant, but we can change the value right there. So I'll put it back to 100. Whenever you change these values, you just hit enter and the chart will be updated. Uh, you can add as many instances of the indicator to the same chart as you like. Its only real limitation is the amount of room you have on the screen and um, I highly doubt you're going to fill that up. So I'm going to grab another Omnia bar indicator here and drag it onto the chart. This time we're going to set up a 10 pip 100 point mean Renko chart and I'm going to put that on the M10. Okay, I'm going to leave everything else to default and click OK. As you can see we now have an M10 which is a 10 pip mean Renko and we have an M100 which is a 100 tick tick chart. I can now go ahead and add one more and this time we're going to set up a 10 pip range bar chart and I'm going to call that an M11. Okay, I'll leave everything else default, click OK Wait a second, there you go. Now we have three charts running. I've got the M100 100 tick chart, I've got the M10 10 pip Renko, mean Renko, and I've got the M11 10 pip range bar chart. The system message, as you can see, is just letting me know that the software is registered to me. And if you have not entered a license key, then the message here will just read that you're running a trial and the date that that expires. If there's an update available to the software, then you will get a system message here just letting you know that there's an update available that you can go and get. And if you do want to update, it's as simple as going to File, Open Data Folder, MQL4, Indicators, go ahead and download the new software, copy it, and come over here and paste it, overwriting everything else. But before you paste that in, just shut your MetaTrader down since the software is running, and make sure you copy and replace everything. Then you can go ahead, go back and launch your MetaTrader. Okay, now that MetaTrader is launched again, we're back where we left off. I've got these three charts running. I can now go ahead and click the M100 and that's gonna open my 100 tick chart. I'll put that up top here. And I'll just load a simple template. Now a cool little feature here is if you have a template that is named offline, then the offline chart generators will detect that and whenever you launch one, it's going to apply the template to the chart. So I could actually just demonstrate that by saving a template as offline, like so. As you can see, I have a template that is called offline. And when I launch the M10 now, which is our 10-pip mean Renko, 
that template is automatically been applied to the chart. Okay, I'm going to drag that down here now and we'll just use half the screen for this one. And then we'll go ahead and launch that M11 which is our 10 pip range bar chart. And we'll put that over here. Now I'm going to minimize the M1. I cannot close it because it's our feed chart. And we'll just take up all the room. So we have a tick chart at the top, a mean Renko to the left here and a range bar chart to the right. I'll start with the tick chart. The first thing that you can do, and really it's for all charts, is apply the Omnia remote. Now if I apply the Omnia remote, the only two choices I have are enable server clock display and mark unreliable chart parts. So I'm just going to leave them both to yes and I'll explain them as we go. The remote gives you a way to remove it from the chart with the X as always. Here's the clock on the bottom right and if you don't want that clock you just turn that off in the settings that I showed you. Uh, if you want to see the unreliable chart parts I'll, I'll just create a really fast tick chart for a second because I can also change the value here on the fly on the chart itself. I just put in a 5 and hit enter and all of a sudden I have a 5 tick chart. Now all of these grey areas appear because we've just started up MetaTrader. Had this chart been running in real time, there won't be any unreliable chart parts because the chart is being created from the incoming tick data. But because we've started up MetaTrader after having it shut down, the maximum information that the software can look to is the standard MT4 time frame. So the one minute chart is the smallest chart and that is not sufficient enough data to determine every five ticks. I mean, obviously there's more than five ticks within an M1 candle, so it just doesn't know, and it's letting you know that these are unreliable. So if you want to switch that off and you don't want to see it, you could do so right here with that setting there, because of course we are trading into the future, we're not trading into the past. So you might not worry about that and just be wanting to have areas of support resistance uh, visible. So I'm going to put this back to 100. Okay, there's generally going to be less than 100 ticks uh, in a one minute bar, so there won't be any unreliable parts here. Now we have our 100 tick chart again, so real nice that you can change that on the fly. There's a button here that you can actually change what type of chart this is on the fly also. So I can actually switch to a different type of chart from the chart itself. So that's just one more feature. The session control button will split the chart into sessions and the best way to show that is to go into properties and switch on period separators. So I click on period separators. I'll zoom out so we can take a look at this. and I'm going to increase the number of ticks to 500 so we have more information. Okay, here you can see the period separators. Basically, the period separator is telling us the start point for each day. And if we were looking at a really long-term chart, the period separator would be the start of each week. But because we're looking at quite a fast chart, these are just marker points for the beginning of each day. Now, with the session toggle off, the keep chart continuous option when we applied that Omnia bar to the M1 a moment ago, the anchor point for the chart is the furthest bar to the left and that just means that the chart starts here and then is created. Now if I switch the session control button on, the anchor point resets itself at the beginning of each day and as you can see we're here we had a, a gap over the weekend and now you can see that gap turn the session off and it just smooths it out and fills in the gap for you. So this is the same on, on all the different types of chart. You can have everything reset at the beginning of each day. If you're looking at long term charts it'll be resetting at the beginning of each week. So I like to just keep my charts continuous and I generally keep that one off. I'm going to put this tick chart back to the hundred that we started with and reload the simple template once more. Now the Omnia remote can run on all the charts, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'll put it on all of our charts, all three charts. The functionality is the same on all of them. I can switch between type of chart if I want. I can change the value on the fly if I want. 
I can switch the session control button on or off right there and if I want to go back to the feed chart then I just click that and I can see it's come to the forefront. If I want to go to any particular chart I could do, um, perhaps I have them all full screen and I'm just looking at my M1 I say I want to go to the tick chart or I want to go to this chart. Now clearly we can use the tabs in MetaTrader to navigate also but if you have you know, quite a lot of charts open you can navigate through them that way as an option. So that is the remote and the final things to talk about the Omnia Auto range and the Omnia Auto volume. The Omnia Auto volume is for the tick chart only and the Omnia Auto range is for all of the price based charts. So the range bars, the range bars without gap, the Renko, the Renko without wicks, the mean Renko and the point original. All of those would use the Omnia Auto range. The tick chart uses Omnia Auto volume. Now they both work very similarly and I'm just going to talk about the volume one first. If I drag it on the chart, I basically have a few things to tell the software. You know, what do I want the average time of each of these bars to be and how much data I would like to use for calculation and how often I would like it to be refreshed. So I'm going to use a generic example here of 28,800 minutes for calculation. That's basically a, a month of trading days. If you think a month of trading is always going to be four weeks, is five days a week, uh, that would be 28,800 minutes. Okay, There's obviously an extra day in some months and, and all that, but averaging it out, 28,800 minutes is going to be a month. If you want to then say, I want my calculations checked once a day, I would put 1,440 minutes in there. And then you just want to specify in seconds what you want this tick chart to reflect. So 300 seconds is 5 minutes. We can leave that at 5 minutes for this video. And what we're trying to say with these three settings is that we want it to check the last 28,800 minutes of information one month. And we want it to check that again once a day and update the chart. And we want it to be reflecting the average amount of ticks per five minutes over this last month. Okay, and by clicking OK, that those calculations will be made. And as you can see, the chart updates itself to 418 ticks. So we know that the euro dollar at the moment, the last month of information says that we have an average of 418 ticks per five minutes. Okay, and now we have our a volume based five minute chart which is going to be much more effective than a minute based five minute chart because we're going to eliminate a lot of noise and sideways movement. The Omnia Auto range indicator which works on the rest of the charts, slightly different but the same idea. The minutes for calculation we're going to do the same 28,800 and we want it to refresh once a day and here we're going to say, I'm going to say I want it to represent more of a 30 minute. And you can multiply this by anything you like. Okay, I'm going to multiply it right now by 0 0.5 because we're using mean Renko charts. And the only difference between the mean Renko and all of the other price based charts is that the value is from the middle of the bar to the close. So although we have a 10 pip mean Renko chart open right now, each bar is actually 20 pips. Okay, so just keep that in mind. And the multiplier, I'm going to do 0 0.5 to because of that reason. So what we're saying here with this uh, collection of inputs is that we want the software to look at the last 28,800 minutes of data one month. We want it to check that once a day. And we want it to reflect the average amount of pip movement every 30 minutes over that past month. And then we're just going to multiply it by 0 0.5 for the purpose of the mean Renko. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK. As you can see, it determined that 6.1 pips is the average 30 minutes of movement over the past month for this pair. Okay, and it's going to check that once a day and it will automatically update that for you once a day. If you don't want it to update once a day, maybe you just want it to update uh, once a week, well 7200 minutes would give you that effect. 
right? So it's, it's all quite self-explanatory once you understand the core concept here. I'm sure you've got that. The final demonstration would be the exact same indicator on the range chart. Uh, the only difference is that you wouldn't need to multiply it by 0 0.5 because you'd, you'd want the full bar set. I mean, you might want to multiply it by 0 0.5 anyway for a different reason, but um, for, for the sake of the video, I'm just going to stick to these same variables. And once again, we want the last month of data. What is the average 30 minutes of movement in pips? Uh, just multiply by one to keep that number and update that once a day. Okay, so I click OK. Indicator makes its calculations. Obviously, it's 12.2 because it's twice as much as 6.1. And now we have our 12.2 range bar chart, which is reflecting the average 30 minutes of movement for this pair over the past month. Okay, and that will update once a day unless you tell it otherwise. So those are the two pieces of freeware that are included in this package. And if you have any questions about anything that we talked about in this video, just post them in the comments section uh, below the video and we'll get back to you as soon as we can.